Hey guys, here we are again, and uh, second time, I think, I'm using my new external mic, and we have a window unit air conditioner right there cranking away, and so hopefully the mic will help to drown out some of that. We, um, again, it's just been a rough time, and uh, haven't been able to bring you a shave lately, and we're looking at... Uh, a week or a week and a half something like that of growth maybe even more um, I'm enjoying my pipe hobby quite a bit um, and it sure is uh, nice at the end of the day um, to just go out to the front porch and uh, and have a pipe um, and uh, and then work to do and things like that so uh, here here's the gear We've got uh, something soft and comfy, the Sterling High Mountain White brush. The first piece of hardware, the car of Christopher Bradley, as you know. And uh, this is the open comb. I've got a lot of uh, stubble, of course, so an open comb can often be a great choice. Um, and the D, this is the D open comb. If I've used it before, and I, I think I have, uh, but I may not have, um, the D was the highest I went on the solid bar because when I moved up to the E, it was too aggressive for me by kind of a big step. I was very surprised to, to all of a sudden go move from the D to the E and be shocked by how much, how much more aggressive it was. So we'll see how the open comb is today. Matter of fact, it could go poorly because the uh, carve, often the open comb will feel and have an aggressiveness similar to one step up from its similarly labeled solid bar. So the D open comb might feel more like the E solid bar. So we'll see. Obviously on the first pass, where I, because I've got so much stubble, it's not going to be a problem. But it's on that third pass that we'll see how things go. Um, you've maybe seen me waving these things around. That same Nasset I used a while back, we're going to do him again. He's probably on his ninth shave or something like that. I don't think the tick marks are quite accurate in this case. Um, I'm too lazy to go grab another blade. We're just going to use that one. I'm sure it'll be fine. And then I haven't tried my King of Oud yet from Holy Cow. And that is how you say it. It's, uh, most people figure it out. It's holy. But then the caw, sometimes people say caw, but it's actually cow. And uh, uh, you can actually see the, uh, you can see the logo of the cow's head, the steer, you know, behind there. Um, they were just doing a play on words. And if they would have known how many people would mispronounce their name, uh, I wonder if they would have chosen something different. But uh, I like Oud a lot. Now the king, I may have actually tried this once before. It would have been a small sample. The King of Bourbon, uh, you know, King of something. There was another King of that they had. And, uh, yeah, King of Bourbon. It was actually more of a vanilla scent because it was from vanilla bourbon. And so it, the, the name that King of actually kind of led people down the wrong path. And I think that was a bad I think it was a bad choice on their part. Um, and uh, so let's see what happens with the King of Oud. And, but we do know that the base is very, very good quality with the uh, Holy Cow. Is this the tallow or the... Uh, it's got the cow's head on it. So I think it is the tallow. Donkey milk. Yeah, cocoa butter, shea butter, cocum butter, lanolin, and hops extract. So I believe that's the tallow version. And uh, let's go ahead and put the, uh, the blade into the carve here. This is the gladius handle. While I'm doing this, uh, Cigar trivia, pipe trivia. Um, 
I, I started pipe smoking because I had been smoking a cigar for a few months and I decided, hey, it doesn't cost too much to try a pipe out. And I did. And it turns out I love it. What I didn't know was that there's the, um, the pipe tobacco and the cigars. There's not a lot of overlap between the types of scents and notes and flavors that you get. Now, they do make scented cigars, but I'm not really talking about those. I'm talking about the normal tobacco. You have notes of uh, cedar is a very dominant note with cigars. Um, uh, hay, uh, uh, pepper, big note with cigars. And uh, uh, woody, woody notes other than cedar are there sometimes too. Uh, there can sometimes be some sweeter notes, but uh, and there are a few others. But then with the pipe tobacco, whole different beeswax there not very much in terms of woody there are uh, some that are are peppery but that's really the only almost the only overlap there um, the uh, often they are well, it's really hard to describe uh, the um, odi uh, kind of corny there are these burly blends that kind of have a grain you know kind of uh, fragrance and, uh, and, and I think they just take different parts of the tobacco plant different areas where the tobacco is grown and I think all that comes into play with the variables uh, and uh, and so that uh, there's a lot more sweetness to be had on the pipe end of the spectrum a lot more kind of harshness to be had on the cigar end of the spectrum and then on the pipe end though you have to worry about tongue bite because there's something different about the tobacco is it's coming through the pipe and it hits your tongue you can you can sting and I don't have that happen very much with the cigars that's enough for that for now we have the guy all ready to go now last time I shaved with a Gillette Tech and I shaved off two weeks of growth with the Tech I did on a regular basis take that down and swish it in the bowl and I was hoping then that would clear the hair out. And I did have to spend on each pass. I only did three passes and it did the job. Uh, I only had to spend a little bit more extra time to take down all that with a tech and two weeks of hair growth. It did the job. You know what? I disassembled the razor after that and there was a lot of stubble in the razor. It didn't clear away because it was just so long. It had grown so long that it got stuck up inside the razor. Um, this one's not like a timeless where the, the hair uh, has this huge channel to go through. So I would have, and I made a note of the video here that I was having to repeat and it wasn't quite cutting as effectively in, in some places. And that was because it was getting full of hair in there. And while I was swishing, that wasn't adequate. What I should have done was open the head a little bit then my swishing would have easily cleared away the stubble. I would have had a better shave. Uh, we don't really have to worry about that too much today with the open comb because the stubble, well, at least we shouldn't, right? Because the stubble is just going to drop away without too much of a problem. Let's get my face wet. And then I will, uh, with, with holy cow, how do we smell? How do we smell this? Yep. I'm going to scoop this. It's a used puck. And so I could, well, yeah, why don't I just brush load it? Nah, you know what? I'll scoop it. You know why? Because then I know how much I've got. I know how much soap. I don't have to worry about if the if it's sat a long time. And so then, therefore, it's harder. Or if the brush is softer, it's a may, it may need more time to pick up more soap. It's not a consecutive load from previous days. It sometimes helps things. And so how about we just do a scoop? And so I will take my quarter teaspoon and I'm going to go a rounded quarter teaspoon because holy cow is one of those where a lot of the soap is needed. Not, um, it's not like Sterling and some others where a, you can even get away with less than a quarter of a teaspoon. And there we go. And I 
um, and just kind of scraped around the edge because when you brush load it makes the part in the middle go down faster and so when I scoop I usually scoop from the outside to kind of help even things out all right so as I press this down we can see that that is definitely a very rounded quarter teaspoon it could be closer to half a teaspoon I'm gonna get my face wet as well as smear this into the bottom of my lather bowl Well, I know that I have oud scented products that that this is not really smelling a lot like that are more on the harsh side. I'm shaking out my brush here. It, it holds a lot of water. Now let's go at it. Oud can be a, a, a pretty poignant scent. And this seems to have a little bit Kind of powder, something kind of perfumey that is there with the oud, almost in a stronger context than the oud itself. This brush is so big, it splays so big because it's so soft that even my extra large bowl here <laughs> can seem a little small. I'm going to go ahead and start adding water. Again, I just, you know what happens so much? I normally shave at night. This probably wouldn't happen if I shaved in the morning. But I normally shave at night, and but a lot of times I have a little bit of work to do at night to kind of polish off the day. Here's my jigger. But when I get to the end of my day, I'm tired. And that seems to be happening more and more. I'm a little bit more tired at the end of the day than I used to be. I can remember when I was just falling asleep, but I was still had a lot of excitement to come and shave. I think I'd, I think it probably has a little bit to do with the fact that I'm, a, I'm using a basin right here instead of water, and so every time I shave, it's about three trips over to the bathroom to get enough water to rinse things out, that sort of thing. So it's a bit of work. I guess I need to change my, it doesn't have to take that long, you know? And so I think I need to change my mindset and realize, hey, you know, it doesn't have to be super long. Just go and take care of it. It'll be a nice break. You know, um, you know the vibe I'm getting from the scent right now is kind of old lady's purse. Um, almost like what tobacco sometimes leans toward. It's, it's like there's a floral component in there. Floral and powdery. And the oud is, if I'm identifying it correctly, is, is quite in the background. Lather's looking terrific. When it was overflowing a minute ago, when I hadn't yet started to add water, a little pro tip there. If you have a lather like that, uh, often it can start to get airy and have that kind of overflowing nature because it needs the water to settle it down. And sure enough, it's become more creamy and I just, I'm not dealing with those same overflow problems even though what I'm doing is adding water. Just because there was, it was being worked up and there was just a lot of air in it. There wasn't enough water to kind of weight it down to make it more 
viscous, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, this lather's looking just terrific so far. I haven't added a lot of water to it. I want to keep adding a little bit more. I want to keep getting a little bit on my fingers because we just have so much in the bowl. I'll keep giving myself a little pre-shave here. shave with this then. Lather games are starting up just in a couple of weeks with how my shaving has changed. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to compete this year. Um, I may just compete in a less um, intensive way may not try to go for all the points. I've been very successful the last couple of years, winning some very nice prizes last year as well as the year before. One of the things I thought about was, uh, it goes through the month of June. One of the things I thought about was choosing based on the themes from only my sterling soaps. I've got a lot of sterling soaps. And wouldn't it be great if I could stay on theme every day just using what I had of sterling soaps? Wouldn't that be neat? Um, another thing I thought about um, was that to get maximum point value in the past, uh, and they have changed the rules a little bit this year, uh, but in the past you, you wanted to use one vendor on one day only. And people like Barrister and Mann... Uh, declaration grooming mammoth they had special days they had certain days that you should use their products and that day would have a theme and so if uh, barrister and mans happened to be on a theme like fruity you know or or um, woodsy or summer or something like that we've got so much double that it's interfering with my lather creation here but then that would really restrict which one of barrister and man's scent the sense that you could use and then on another day where it was you know uh it may be uh your favorite woodsy scent well and if you were already using barrister and man on another day and it wasn't able to be your woodsy scent then you couldn't use barrister and man on that day and so then let's, let's say, uh, you know, Diamond is one of my favorite scents from Barrister and Man. And because I couldn't use it on Favorites Day because I was using something else from, by Barrister and Man somewhere else. And I would lose a point if I duplicated the maker. Well, I was thinking about just redoing it and ignoring that part of the scoring. And, and just, you know, when it says, like, an old fragrance like your dad used to use, or spring fra fragrances, or um, winters, or uh, one that you borrowed from somebody. You know, I just pick the favorite one in that category, regardless of what maker. And if I repeated them, then then you know, no matter. And that would be fun. That would I think that would be a more enjoyable time for me. You can see how much stubble I've. I've got going on here, but the way it shows through the, the lather. All right. So the D open comb. Now it's not a fresh blade, but that's, let's learn something. It's not a fresh blade. So we'll, I could definitely have uh, potentially gotten some clippers and taken my beard down a notch or two and had an easier shave. But I don't know. I'm kind of weird. And lazy sometimes. I am getting some tugging. The um, the tugging part of this 
shave is overshadowing any slickness from the lather. I'll probably be able to discern that later when we've knocked down a lot of the growth. I'm reminded right now of one friend who he often had a lot of growth to shave off because he had hair that just grew crazy fast. All right, let's check and see if I need to do some. Oh, yeah, it's bunching up under there. It's just a lot of hair. <laughs> so. There we go. Yep. So you can you can overclog a carve open comb, even a high gap one. If your stubble is long enough. Much better when I unclog it and we've got a fresh edge that's not hindered by stubble. Yeah, see that. Yeah, the um, uh, there is a gap between the blade edge and the open comb, the tines itself. You can even see uh, on this side some, yeah. Right there, some of uh, the stubble clogged up under there. Um, there are some razors. Uh, you know what? I've got one nearby here. See, this one is the short comb, vintage Gillette New. And like the Fatip open combs, the blade rests right on the teeth of the open comb. And so I wonder if it would just not have any clogging issues because you just wouldn't have the hairs getting underneath the blade and between the tines and that kind of thing. All right, not too bad. The stinging pretty much gone from the uh, tugging. Yeah, just like the king of bourbon, that's really more of a king of vanilla, misnamed. This ood seems to be in the background. Like uh, if you're an English dude who wears a white collar around like the old guys in that first season of Black Adder, for instance, uh, I, I, I enjoy that show a lot. Um, you know, old English Victorian type times that kind of seems where this scent belongs. The oud is hidden and, uh, and this kind of powdery Almost floral is, is what's in the front. Now, there we go. Now I'm really able to feel more the, the brush. And during that rinse, I was able to feel the nice slickness from this soap. I was also kind of focusing on smoking a pipe recently because you know, I'm in North Carolina, and it definitely gets hot here in the summer, and we're in the middle of May now, and so that hot period is coming. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying the meditative aspect of, of smoking a pipe or a cigar, kind of like what I've mentioned to you guys already. And that's something I like from shaving as well. And so who knows, once it gets really warm, I, my shaves may become easier to be more regular because it's just so hot outside. And if the mosquitoes start, I'm a mosquito magnet. They start showing up. <laughs> yeah.
then I might uh, do a whole lot of inside stuff instead of outside. Now, that went very well. I can tell that's an aggressive setting. I can feel the edge of the blade for sure. Uh, and so I'm very interested to see how this third pass, path, uh, pass goes. And uh, right now, don't have any irritation, nothing's lingering, anything like that. So uh, as long as I kept a good uh, clearing away of the stubble uh, during that first pass, I think, you know, the uh, razor was very suited to the task and even this old blade just not having a problem. So for the last, you know, months, I haven't really shaved very much. Um, my daughter, in her whole life, she's roughly 10, um, and it's, it's been five or more years where I have always had a nicely shaven face because I just enjoy shaving so much. And so she's just never known me to let my face go for more than a couple of days. And so <laughs> she keeps, uh, she's the one that is reminding me that I have let my beard go way longer than I have ever had before. She just hasn't seen me like that. Easy splay on this brush. That's why I like it. Nice soft tips. They're not treated, you know, like a finest badger or two band would be. And they're just naturally soft. So great high mountain white if you are looking for the, the softer end of the high mountain whites. They can vary. I have tried a couple of other high mountain whites that had tips that had more firmness to them. Now we are experiencing that comfy glide and movement of the blade across my face. And I, I didn't think about that before, but I, it jumps into my mind now that maybe with this third pass, I'm glad to have the, the Nasset with nine or ten uses in this aggressive razor because that could be smoothing out the experience. It was still sharp enough to mow through the growth in pass one and two, but it's smoothed out enough to where, mm, yeah, that feels good. Smoothed out enough to where the uh, the aggressiveness is, is, is dampened and reduced a little bit on the third pass because the hair, the stubble, isn't there to protect me from the blade anymore. So there we go. Um, in one sense, I, I wouldn't mind shaving with this in general, but it's another one of those cases where there are just so many other better ones that I personally like the smell of. Uh, and so... I, uh, I might throw this guy in the pile to sell. And I, I don't know that I'd call it a feminine fragrance, but it has some feminine leanings, but it does have some kind of masculine leanings as well. And so maybe that's why I'm, I'm not able to, you know, put it exactly in one place. Uh, and so I think in general, um, you know, it's, it's kind of unisex, perhaps. But you could definitely make the case for it to be appropriate for ladies as well. Um, but just oohed by its very nature, and I think there's enough in this scent to, uh, to, to kind of show its nature a little bit, is, is I think in the more masculine spectrum, uh, when it's in a decent enough quantity. Uh, but as a fan of oud. Matter of fact, my very first balm down there, and I'm going to use this after the shave here, is agar from Sterling. And I use this so much. I'm a big fan of oud, both in my shaving soaps and in my aftershave products, because so many soaps 
so many scent profiles go so well with the oud scent. I've had two just magical combinations. Uh, one of them was a lavender forward type scent and it was kind of blah until I put the oud as the chaser, as the aftershave product. And the lavender and the oud played so well together, it was terrific. And there's and that, that happened once before in, in some other scent. Now right now as I'm talking, my face has a little bit of tenderness, you know, where uh, you know the aggression probably was uh, felt a little bit more. It, it, it's taken a minute for that to, to start to come out, maybe because of the, the lather kind of drying on my face or something like that. Uh, let me get a good rinse and uh, this is how much lather we have left and I'm glad that I got that that scoop that was kind of doubled almost it was rounded off with product because I don't have a ton of soap left I mean I could probably make two passes left but it's not um, this is how much I have left with other soaps when I use half as much product and so that's why I don't have a lot of holy cow is because I, uh, I value the uh, uh, economy. I value the, uh, the case where a little soap goes a long way in general. I still have some other sense of holy cow because it's a good product, good company. But they're just kind of less along the lines of, you know, my tastes with a lot of, with some of their scents. And then with the fact that you just have to use so much of their product. However, I still have so much soap that maybe I need to, maybe if I switch to Holy Cow and use it up twice as fast, that still <laughs> might be a good idea, right? So that I can at least work through it. Uh, how much water did we use today? Almost 20. Um, 19 millimeters, milliliters of water. And then we'll use the agar after I get a good rinse here. So here's what the brush looks like after a good wringing out, after a good shake out in the sink. Washing it, rinsing it really well, and now after the towel it looks a little even nicer than that. So big old bloom here and you can see I've even got a an o-ring in there to keep it from blooming quite so big. Uh, yeah, in, in general there's a uh, I think there's a 57 and a 54 or something like that in terms of the loft with the Sterling High Mountain White and uh, Given how this is just so Generous, I don't think I'd have a problem. I might even like the shorter one better But I got a great deal on this one used so that's why I have it and I don't mind. I, I do enjoy it Put that over on my bought one of those spice racks that's kind of stepped and I put that on my shelf and so all my brushes are they look a lot nicer and are easier to get to. Um, so the uh, the agar, oh, I forgot to rinse. There we go. And I am reminded now of how nice a cool water rinse is after a shave. That irritation is just gone. The tenderness was relieved. And it wasn't even cold water. It was just cool water. Very refreshing. Very nice. So let's Sterling Agar my face and get some real oud in play here. So like the king of bourbon, the king of oud is a little bit of a disappointment. If I, I think I started to say this earlier, but I don't think I was able to remember and keep track of my train of thought, but if I was a big Oud fan and I saw the title here, I would be very disappointed in the uh, in the lack of uh, a dominant Oud nature to this soap scent. This is, is much nicer. I would rather have a puck of Sterling's Agar. I don't think it's available anymore. It must not have sold very well, but I do have one around. Um, from back when I realized that I liked it. I'd rather have that than this puck of holy cow. 
um, just because it's a true representation of oud. It's actually got more oud in it, uh, at least that comes across to my nose. So there we go, folks. Um, really nice to be back with you. Um, and we'll see if we can maybe not wait quite so long for my next shave. Um, I'll never be able to bring the old Nasset back if I keep skipping days like I have. And I want to I wanna get up to 500 on that thing. Um, so we'll just have to see, uh, see how things go. All right, you guys, uh, take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I hope that there's been something in this video to help you out. Take care now. Good night.